In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. <coughs> Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. That is to say, of his passion and resurrection, for it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem who lives and reigns forever and ever. And to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us pause a moment as a word to purify our minds and hearts and help us to prepare ourselves to share the passion of the Lord and also with all the pain, the fear that we are experiencing right now with everyone around the world and especially with people in America. And I offer this Mass in order to pray for all of you our parishioners of St. Maximilian Kobe. I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fall, through my fall, through my most grievous fall. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the last life. Amen.
I'm reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, my appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he was reclining at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said to them in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. I would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, giving it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, 
From now on, I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep wash with me for one hour? Wash and pray, that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass, without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand, when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, Judas one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword and drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into his sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my father? And he will not provide me with this at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels. But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must come to pass in this way? At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a rubber? with swords and clubs and to seize me. Day after day, I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled.
Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God, and within three days, rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God, whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? We, you have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prosify for us, Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, this man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field even today is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, they made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, 
Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him in the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they had come to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests and the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saves others, he cannot save himself. So he is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice. Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders heard it, who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink, but the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this was a son of God. There were many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. 
When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in, an, in his new tomb that he had had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while still alive, said, After three days, I will be raised up. Give orders then that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposter would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, the guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a long gospel reading to recall the story of the passion of the Lord. And what does it have to do with what we are going through right now at this time? COVID-19, the virus. And I could say, I would say that it has a lot of similarities, the reactions. I just wonder, do you have the mask to protect yourself? And now if you go to the store, Walgreen, Walmart, or any store, and you cannot find the mask to protect yourself anymore. And that is panicking and people are fearful and worried and complaining and they said, what happened? Why don't we have enough mask? And even the doctors now and nurses, surgical masks, they don't have it. So I've been thinking about it and said, easy. You don't have to worry about it now. All the ladies, you have your bra cups. You can convert it and make it a surgical cup and a uh, mask for it. And it, you can do it. There is no reason for us to fear, but because we are reacting to this, and, 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 and it's just, I have a couple that I'm working with them and prepare them for marriage. And the wedding is scheduled the first weekend of May. And now, because we limited the mass for 10 people only, and then no mass for wedding or funeral, and limited 10 people, so they have to cancel the, the wedding and they have to cancel the reception as well. And she complained because she said, I, I knew her when she was 12 and fighting with leukemia. And she survived. And she now she said, it's time for me to celebrate. And, and why me? All my friends already had their wedding and reception to celebrate and live their life joyfully. And now for me, what happened? And a lot of things happening around us, it disrupt our life. And when we first heard about the coronavirus or COVID-19, the first reaction uh, is in China, too far away, don't worry about it, so indifference. Some might feel sorry for the Chinese people, but it's still too far away. And then when it spread to South Korea, and then Europe, and Italy, and France, and Spain, and all these countries, that we begin to worry. And then and we are afraid and fear and then when it comes to Washington, and 
then to New York, California, and then other places now. And then now is Houston is they are thinking about maybe another hot spot. And it begins we begin to worry. And fear and panicking. And then after panicking and then we see we shortness of a lot of things that we would like to have. And then we complain, we complain and then we question why. And then we question, we complain, and then we blame. We blame somebody. Who is in charge? The president, the governor, the mayors, the people in charge of the hospitals. They were not prepared. So we begin to blame other people. And these reactions are not foreign to us. Listen to the gospel story. And we can see the reactions of the disciples, the people around the trial of Jesus. There, there are a lot of similarities there. Denial, indifference to Jesus, and then fearful, just like the disciples. Jesus said they would be afraid and run away. Denial. Just like Pilate washed his hand. I have nothing to do with this man. And we do have some people in our society doing that as well. I have nothing to do with this virus. Someone else's responsibility. I do not know this man. Just like Peter said, distance himself from this. And this is what happening in our society as well. And a lot of us fear, panicking, complaining, and blaming other people. And that is not the approach that we want to have. And that is not the reaction that Jesus expects to have from us. So we can learn from some beautiful characters in the story. First, Mary, the Blessed Mother. No fear, no complaint, no indifference, no panicking, not blaming anyone. But she just quietly and silently journey along with Jesus Christ the Son of God. A beautiful example for us. And continue to wait for the result of this event. And we can learn from the other women. Beautiful figures, Veronica, following along the station of the cross and offer him the towers in order to wipe and cover his face, clean his face. Simon, or Simeon, offered to carry the cross for Jesus along the way. Joseph offered the tomb in order to bury Jesus there. So all these figures in the story give us an example how to face the challenges, the crisis that we have right now. And we have a lot of good people offering their talents, their skills, their money in order to help the victims, as well as the doctors and nurses, to carry out their mission. And we can do that as well. I have a beautiful story to share with you. Our staff here now, some of the members of the staff staying home, working at home. And we have some staff working here at 
the office. But because we do not have the Sunday Mass, Masses, we don't have collection. We don't have the funds, so I begin to worry. How are we going to continue to have the staff here and maintain the church? And then one person, and he and his wife contacted me and asked me, Father, what can we do? What can we help? I just shared with him my worry about this. And he said, we are going to contribute $25,000 to the church. And you will receive the check this week. In order to help you to keep the staff, because they also need money to support themselves and their families. And this is a beautiful story. And this gave me the strength, the courage, the lesson to continue on and to face what we are facing right now. So learn from Jesus, from Mary, from Simon, from Veronica, Joseph, all these characters in the story we just heard today. And for this week, we enter into Holy Week together with Jesus and with all of these beautiful people. And then we pray, we fast, and we do good things for the people around us. And that is what God wants us to do. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of me, one substantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the point of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We know that God will never abandon us. So we cry out with our knees and the knees of the world, knowing that we will be heard. For the Church, as we begin our solemn remembrance of the events of our salvation, may God grant us a spirit of humility and devotion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the repentance and conversion of all hearts that have turned away from the Lord, and for the salvation of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who have been imprisoned or condemned to death, that they may know the infinite saving mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick in our world, especially those suffering from the virus, may Christ who knew pain and suffering in his own life fill them with healing and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of us, as we complete our Lenten journeys, that we may be strengthened in faith, hope, and love as we gather to worship during this Holy Week, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. 
for those who have died, marked with the sign of faith. May they come to share in the fullness of eternal life in the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, yeah, prayers. And for our special intentions, especially for the parishioners of St. Maximilian and Colby, the repose of the soul of Thomas Ferris and Lindsay Boker, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, yeah, prayers. And let us pause for a moment to lift up to God all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Merciful God, we know that you will never forsake us, and so we call upon you today. Hear our prayers and accompany us through our trials, as you did for your Son, in whose name we offer them, our Lord Jesus Christ, forever and ever.
the Father of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the beautiful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of him. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church friend throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and his assistant, George, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, Saint Maximilian, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray. 
pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked, and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.